Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelorette Recap, a guy's review. As you all know, Monday night we saw the stunning finale of Katie Thurston's season of The Bachelorette. As she found love with Blake Moynes, we also saw this conversation take place between her and Greg Grippo, who ended up being her bronze medal bad boy. Greg Grippo was the early favorite to win the show and then quickly unraveled in the last few episodes. The After the Final Rose, uh, he mentioned he had no regrets and Katie came off angry. She knows she was angry. I just made a video with a therapist named Franny and we talked about anger and what that means when we show anger as an emotion and the underlying issues. Katie's anger, uh, I'm sure, was justified and I'm sure she was left feeling like he stiffed her with the bill. Uh, The question becomes, Greg Grippo, was it all an act? Do you feel remorse? Do you feel like you uh, have uh, grown at all in the spiritual journey? We're going to get into this. Now, in this video, I'm going to be recapping Nick Vial's conversation with Greg Grippo. This is like the extra credit homework. You got to go and actually watch Nick and Greg's conversation first. Don't take this video as a substitute for that conversation. I will play several clips for it, but again, this is me promoting that video first. Commentary is about uh, reacting to what we already saw, so get on the same common denominator there and go watch that video, come back, and you're back. All right, folks. So, anyway, I get a lot of questions like this right here. Do you have a side? Uh, Bachelor Windmill had an Instagram post. Team Katie, Team Greg. And I get it. I understand that our views spike, our uh, our algorithms spike when we pick a side and we defend that wall. My answer, I think checking a box is inherently what's wrong with the discussion. It boils it down to a right wrong and that takes away the conversation that's important. And again, I, I do respect the this, uh, this person asking me this question, do I have a side? Um, a lot of times that's what we do though. We go, what side are you on? Are you You voted, who did you vote for? I got to know who you voted for before we have this conversation. And it's like, okay, sure, whatever. Uh, But the point here is that it's complicated. Greg could have been a horrible boyfriend to Katie, but could be a good boyfriend, husband, and father to somebody else because he's going to learn from his mistakes. Or in some cases, you know, people that are like real narcissists, they probably never learn because they think they're always right. They're the star of their own story. And it's like, look, we need to understand that, yeah, we are the lead main character in our own story, but we are just a supporting act in somebody else's. So true empathy is realizing that you're not the lead in someone else's story and you can put yourselves in their shoes. That's not what Greg did in the episode. He was too worried about his own limitations, um, his own, um, you know, uh, neediness that he wasn't able to see how difficult this was all for Katie and why she was in the position she was. So with that said, let's check out several clips from this interview. I'm going to play three different clips. I'm going to play the first one where Craig sort of, uh, I'm sorry, Greg sort of explains his downfall. We're going to get into acting. He actually breaks down what uh, the acting rumors were all about and um, also his journey to even get on The Bachelorette. Again, for the full conversation, go over to Nick Viles' YouTube channel and you can check that out. But let's jump right into this uh, conversation. That made sense. Nevertheless, you know, how you kind of went about it, to be honest, you you kind of look like a dick and seemed, you know, cold and dismissive. So again, while I was able to empathize why you might have felt the way you did, didn't necessarily like how you went about it. So I guess my first question right off the bat is, do you still feel that way about not having any regrets or have you, or has that uh, position changed for you? No, there's definitely been some change. Um, you know, the first time I watched it, I uh, watched it in the back and it was coming from my own place of hurt when I was watching that still. Um, I sadly wasn't looking at it through Katie's lens in that exact moment. Um, you know, looking back on it, watching it for the second time with all the, uh, the viewers. Um, yeah, came off like an ass, came off like a petulant child at times. Um, and I regret it because, you know, at the end of the day, she didn't deserve that. I definitely projected a lot of my insecurities and my anger in that moment on her. And it, at the end of the day, it just wasn't fair to her. Now, if Greg had said this to Katie at the beginning of their conversation, what is she going to say to that? You're right. 
You are a petulant child. You did project your insecurities. It was humbling and painful. Uh, that He wasn't there yet, okay? And sometimes in an argument, if you've ever argued with a spouse or something, sometimes it's not the first apology. We know Chris Harrison with his seven apologies. When ever, it's never the first apology that the, that's the one that's going to stick because you're still learning, you're still defensive, you're still kind of getting out of your own way here. So he wasn't able to get there at that moment. Now, Will I be accused of defending Greg? Sure. I think that's the case. Uh, is there a deeper coalition of people that are trying to get Greg as the next Bachelor? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not, that's not, that's above my pay grade. But when analyzing this just specifically with this conversation, it's going to be up to you to decide, do you take someone at their word that they're learning and growing, or do you just think they've got some like deeper sinister motivation? I'm going to go with taking them at their word that they're growing until proven otherwise by future actions because we can't go backwards in time and say well but yeah you say you're a petulant child but how, how do you explain how you're acting well like a petulant child and now i'm telling you i realized that and uh, you know they're put in these situations with no social media they're put in these situations with no cell phones and they're really left to just ruminate with their own mind and if you have some unfinished negative business going on in your head it's going to unearth itself and it's not going to be pretty Okay. Well, we, we appreciate you, you know, being honest about that. You know, I, I want to ask you some more questions just about how you handle it. Um, just because obviously, you know, a lot of people were, you know, triggered by, by what they saw. A lot of people felt like when you got angry, as you know, some of us have, that not only were you, you know, trying to leave, but almost wanted Katie almost to hurt as well because you were hating would that be fair to say or or not you know as much as it sucks to say i gotta admit yeah it's a fair characterization to uh way to look at it um again watching it back for the second time i mean i was confused after um i initially left after afr because i really wanted to end it off on a good note between us um but I saw how hurt she was. And so I really tried to watch it back the second time from her lens. And yeah, I mean, I was ashamed about how I reacted in those moments. Um, she didn't deserve it, plain and simple. Um, it wasn't fair to her. And I have to look at this. Okay. Um, what do you think, you know, watching that back um, and watching that fight with Katie, what do you, what would you say is something? If anything, have you learned about yourself that you um, maybe didn't realize and potentially hope to change? Yeah, I mean, this has been a you know both a humbling and a very painful you know situation that you know I've been watching. It's just it's humbling to know. Yeah, I'd rather people you know to bring up like the acting stuff. I'd rather people say, "Oh, he was acting." than to look myself in the mirror and be like, you know what? I still have work, obviously, to do on myself. I projected a lot on her. Um, and it was my own fears, my own secure insecurities, it was my own sadness, it was my own anger. And yeah, a lot of that has to do, you know, with what I haven't processed. You know, even my brother put it during my hometown. I haven't really talked much about my dad. You know, I tried going to therapy right out of the bat. Um, and only went for a limited amount of time. Um, so a after your father passed, you you did get some therapy. Yeah, um, I grew really cr close with that guy. Um, his name was Ron. He was an incredible guy. Um, he was like mid eighties. He was like a he reminded me of Yoda. Honestly, he was just he had, just had so much wisdom to him. And I would always he he just he was so great to me. Um, and he taught me so much about life in those moments and and about what's important in life and saw him, you know, twice, twice a week for about, you know, 10 to 12 months. Okay. And, you know, sadly on the back end of that year, um, he actually got diagnosed with stage four and ended up dying within that week. And yeah. So that was also like a painful. Yikes. Yikes. So finds therapy and the therapist that he bonds with dies of cancer. Uh, what's the lesson there, Greg? What is the spiritual journey you're on? Now, again, you know, for the sake of coming off redundant, will people say, oh, he's just reading us his sob story? Sure, your mind won't be changed. Um, do, I, do I get paid if I get you to change your mind? No, no. I get paid 
by being able to look at things from different viewpoints. I think that's where the bread and butter of the show is. And how horrible that he goes to therapy. I'm laughing in, at, at the irony of it all. That he goes to therapy and through that therapy bonds with somebody who then gets cancer and dies, which I don't know if it's for sure that his dad died of cancer, but his dad, yeah, his dad, his dad died of, his dad found out he was sick. Well, we'll get it. We'll get into all that. Um, very fascinating to hear him say that he was kind of processing it, but of course he's not there. Of course there's plenty to work on for it, for Greg to say, look, if you guys want to believe the scenario that I was just on the show acting, that's a better scenario than the truth, which is that I actually was that way. I actually was that needy or am that needy, and I actually do have all these problems. A, a fascinating and humble way for him to put uh, his own issues, to say, hey, look, the sinister idea, the, the grand conspiracy <laughs> makes me look a lot better than this ugly truth that I, uh, you know, essentially, like he said, admitted to acting in a way where hurting Katie was part of his solution to dealing with rejecting her. You know, he framed it in as the victim, which is never safe. It's just never safe to frame as a victim the, your exit to be like, I'm leaving because you did X, Y, and Z to me. That's exactly what he did. And that's probably the root, I, I couldn't know for sure, of Katie's anger. That it's like, how dare you? How dare you leave me when I'm putting myself out there too? When I'm begging for you? How dare you do that? And at the same time, how dare you blame that on me? So I can totally see Katie's anger there. This conversation couldn't happen on After the Final Rose for several reasons. First of all, it's an hour-long conversation. After the Final Rose was only going to give him 10 minutes, 20 minutes at max, and they were too angry to have that conversation. I do expect Katie to watch this. Not my video, but Nick's. I do expect her to watch that because who wouldn't? Who wouldn't watch their ex sort of admit all of their wrongs? And through that, whether it's a private message that they share or not, I believe there will be some healing that goes on. One can only hope for both their sakes. No point in raising your blood pressure every time you think about someone. Best case scenario when you move on from a bad breakup is to be the person that no longer thinks about your ex, no longer has dreams or regret or anger. That's not a good scenario. Burn it off and move forward. Hopefully they both can do that. Two more clips. Let's play. <clears throat> It must be obviously a hard thing to own up to, so I, I do want to thank you for, for being honest about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You mentioned acting. Katie mentioned acting. Yeah. The internet's been talking <laughs> about acting. So <laughs> can you shed some light on where is this coming from? Uh, did you take acting classes? Where did you take acting classes? If so, how long did you take them? Like, just let, let's just get it yeah. out there. What exactly are people talking about? And, and let's hear it from you in terms of the intensity or extensiveness of your acting career. Awesome. Finally. Um, <laughs> you know, right, up, right off the bat out of college, you know, well, first off, I played basketball my entire life. Didn't really do anything else. And then right out of college, um, Got a life insurance job out in Boston for Bay State Financial. Um, okay. Man, I was miserable. I was studying for Series 6. I got my life accident health exam. I was there for about, you know, a few months to six months. And I was just like, what the hell am I doing? Like, let me <laughs> let me just do something creative. You know, I felt like there was a lot more to me. Um, and I didn't know where to go in life. I really didn't. But I knew I just wanted more. Um, I wanted to take a chance on myself. And acting was always something that, you know, I wanted to see if it was for me and ended up finding this amazing school. First off, you got to read his book. Um, I had to read his book, the William Esper studio. Um, it was an incredible book. And, you know, when going there, it was, it broke down a lot of walls of mine. Um, a lot of insecurities. Uh, I mean, you go up there and you're it, these people were incredible and like they, they were just incredible actors. And here I am like, first time stepping into this like unbelievable studio and I'm just like a deer in headlights but my dad actually got sick you know four months into my schooling there and I ended up missing so much and you know the first year I did two years of acting school there and the first year it was uh no like character no, no like scripts really you know it's just all trying to be present in the moment it was kind of like life you know it, sure. life it, it, it life building you know um methods and 
and being able to just be really present in moments with people. And that's what I really appreciated about it. But, you know, the second year, you know, it got down to really serious shit reading Shakespeare. And I missed so much time because I was, you know, everyone's married and has, you know, two, three kids now in my family. And I was the one that really had to step up and help my mom and my dad. And I missed a ton of time and I just didn't love it. Haven't been an audition in my life. So like when this came out, I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, I have it on my page. I have it on the Instagram on my page. I'm not hiding it. It is what it is. I haven't been on audition in my life. What I haven't do, done any What do you mean on your page? Like you had like that? You like I had a picture. I, I had a picture in front of the studio. Oh, okay. Um, on, on Instagram? That, yeah, that I went to. Um, I didn't think it was going to blow up like this. And I mean, I told Katie AFR, like I really wanted to reach out to her when this was all coming out, but I didn't want to step on Blake's toes at all or, or cause you know, I figured that they were engaged at that moment. Um, and Blake's an awesome guy and I just like didn't want to cross any boundaries. No, so that, that he's got sense. that right. I, Blake is a great guy. Um, I've heard little, from sorry, you know, my hold on there, hold on. in-depth research. So this, this can get kind of um, into the whole, like he says he didn't want to step over the boundaries. Again, I, I got to operate from the place where you agree with someone's tr train of thought. Would it have gone over well if he reached out to Katie? Probably not. At the same time, look, like I, I'm actually surprised if him and Katie had never talked that he had gone to acting school. But like he said, he had never gone to an audition in his life. I mean, it's like, uh, he mentioned being mi a miserable career choice. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Very similar to my career path. Studied business, got out of school. It was like, this sucks. Got fired from um, an ad agency that I worked at. I just sucked at it. Got into acting. I got into acting. I've realized uh, acting's okay. I, I still audition for projects. Uh, just got an audition for HBO yesterday. Didn't get a call back. All right, folks. And the point is, is that it's just like a side course to what I do. From there, I got into improv comedy. That was fun. And then that got me into stand-up, which is the the true. Uh, a creative expression that I love. And Nick, um, I'm sorry, Greg just hasn't found that yet. He hasn't found out what his thing is yet. So it's easy for the audience to be like, oh, you studied acting, you're a plant. We just, we're almost so, we're so ingrained in wanting to find the conspiracy of it all. Um, it's not a surprise that he was like, uh, you know, an athlete his whole life, you know, like center stage. That was his like sort of expression. And then acting, I'm sorry, uh, basketball. And then basketball ends. And it's like, what's more? I, I need something more. I need to replace the high of winning a game with something. And you're not going to get that selling insurance in Boston. I'm sorry. It's just not going to come. There's plenty of people that enjoy their jobs and it's just a fragment of what they do. But for some people, they have this pursuit for more and maybe looking at an actor, you know, that's the big thing. Then you go to acting school, you realize there's so many more talented people than me. That's not what it is. Hopefully he finds out what it is. And maybe it will be acting. And I don't think that'll, like like I said all along, you know, some blue in the face here, that um, going on uh, The Bachelor is not an avenue to getting acting roles. There, He's good looking enough to walk into a commercial agency and start auditioning. At, the Bachelor is not the place to do that. And anyone in his acting community would give him the same advice. It's pretty proven. So he, I didn't mention this in, in the recap, but you have to watch Nick's podcast. Um, Greg mentioned the, re, the way his dad passed away was really brutal. Um, they were at a Knicks game one night, and then he had to get rushed to the ER the next day. They found out he only had a few months to live. Uh, they couldn't do much treatment for him, so they did a holistic approach. And then Greg ended up going vegan with his dad and sort of just watched his dad whittle away to nothing until he was bedridden, couldn't stand and all that, and then passed away. So anyway, that's that's the uh, story behind like uh, how he lost his father, which, you know, not not to say there's a, a better or worse way, but a pretty, uh, pretty tragic way there. Um, all right, let's go to the 16.50-minute mark. And again, I'm leaving a lot on the table here, so you're going to have a whole rest of the episode to watch, but we're getting through the 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 beginning, like, tough questions from it. I think Nick did a very good job of asking him questions. I mean, he starts it off saying, hey, you look like an a-hole, man. Uh, I don't think this is a softball interview whatsoever. I think it's just a chance for Greg to talk in a fashion that doesn't leave us asking questions in some sort of Reddit thread because that's what everything else is, is piecing together all these clues till we get to hear from the person. Same thing with someone like Rachel Kirk Connell. You piece together all these clues that don't look good and then you just hear someone kind of plead their soul that they're trying to do their best and then you go, okay, now it's up to me to decide whether or not I think you're trying to do your best or not. I'm not going to accept an apology for anybody else, for all those people that were triggered by what they saw that went down. I hope that conversations like this actually help you uh, 
uh, in whatever triggered feeling you have to know that maybe the person that triggered you in, in your life has realized their own wrongs and they're trying to do better. The last thing we want is collateral damage, but sometimes when you watch these things play out, even though it can like flare up your own limbic system, sometimes there's a ending towards it where we get a little bit of enlightenment and realize like we're just trying to do our best and as much as it sucked to be a part of that damage, let's move forward. Let's see what he has to say about getting on the show itself. Yeah, it's been a journey for me to get to uh, this point. Um, I first got the call. Um, I remember I was walking to New York. I was just grabbing lunch. <clears throat> all of a sudden, an LA number calls me. I pick up and it was somebody from casting. How did they get your information? Did you sign up? My... No, my sister Samantha submitted me. Okay. Um, and I found found that out after they called me, but I thought it was my buddy pranking me at first. I'm like, no, who the hell is this? And they're like, so and so from The Bachelorette. I'm like, no, seriously, how how do you how did you get my info? And that was actually for uh, I believe it was um, it was for Becca Kufrin. Uh, wow. Um, All the way but, back to Becca Kufrin. Yeah. So ended up actually. How, how many years ago was go. that? Three, like three, two, three. Okay. Anyways, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was extreme. I was extremely young at the time, yeah. and um, I believe they called me. I believe they do that stuff in like the fall um, when they first call you. Um, yeah, it's like late and, fall. I mean, when you tell that story, I mean, I was in San Francisco at a work trip, and I kind of had a similar reaction. Yeah. My friend signed me up a while ago, and yeah. I was like, "What? what? I don't, you, you know." Say, so what? yeah, it was uh, it was like late. <laughs> it was early November at the time. So yeah. So uh, and I'm sorry. Go right. ahead. Um, didn't even go through the next steps. Just told them it wasn't the right time for me. I was extremely young. Um, I wasn't ready to uh, be on the show at all. Um, and it actually ended up happening. My dad was then six, three months later. So I ended up, you know, I ended up having to be home regardless. They then reached out to me um, for, it was Claire season. Um, ended up calling me, had no idea obviously who the bachelorette was going to be, you know, they threw out, you know, some names and, you know, I uh, ended up getting announced that it was Claire about three days before I was leaving. Um, the bags were packed. I was ready to go. Um, on Claire season. Yeah. Okay. And I'll always remember when she was like announced on GMA, I was like, I don't know if she's going to like me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if like, we're, is like the perfect fit. Um, but you know, casting was just like, you know what? Age is just a number, you know, let's, um, you never know. And yeah, I'll give anything a shot, really. I'm just like, you know, who knows? Like maybe we'll hit it off. You know, you just never know until you know. I went there and it was, uh, it was what, two or three days you sit in that hotel room before uh, the first night and COVID hit. I was, I was watching Curb Your Enthusiasm the whole entire time because of what was going on in the news. And I didn't really want to watch the news because of how like sad it was, everything that was going on. Sure. So I had no idea. So they, they came into my room, the producers, and they're like, don't panic. I'm like, about what? And they're like, the world shut down. I'm like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. So they sent us back home and I believe it was like five months on the line. Um, they, re they restarted that season. And I remember them calling me back in June, asking me if I wanted to do it. And I had a, like a long talk with my family, had a long talk with producers. Um, I wanted to do it if I truly saw myself with the girl. Um, and I just didn't feel like it was gonna be, you know, a good, res you know, a good result. You know, you go on this TV show and, you know, you kind of lay it all out there. You don't know what to expect, but I just felt like it wasn't for me at that point. Interesting. I mean, I guess in a way, according to you, like you, you actually gave it some consideration about who the, the bachelorette was. All right. So uh, that goes against the idea that uh, he's been trying to get on for several seasons. He decided uh, Claire's season wasn't for him. Uh, and then, of course, this is what this is what the producers do. They, they, they got a bunch of headshots. They pull from them. All right, Greg Grippel, we haven't gotten him on the show yet. He's passed all the test of what we want to see. So, you know, that's, uh, you know, that obviously makes sense. Let's go to our final clip here, 2345. Again, plenty I'm leaving on the table for you guys to go watch over there. So definitely go support. How far was filmed three or four weeks ago? Is that correct? After the final rose. About three now, okay. yeah. And that was before last week episode air so before we saw some of the reactions from people how people were triggered uh last night yeah 
for the people who hear that you are now sorry or you have regrets and you see it, why should people believe you in terms of yeah. why don't, you know, for people who are going to say, he's just saying that because he knows people are mad at him. Uh, he has no, the benefit of, of hindsight so. now. Why should anyone believe that's actually how you feel? Yeah. I mean, it's fair if they don't believe me, truthfully. Um, again, when I watched it back for the second time and I try to see, you know, what Katie saw in those moments, I, I just felt uncomfortable. I, I, it was a very painful and humbling, you know, experience, you know, again, I'd rather people say that I was acting in these moments than having to be like, shit, I can do so much better. And the way I, you know, did talk to Katie in those moments, there's, it sucks how, you know, I reacted. I, I, it sucks that I triggered so many people. Um, and it's, it's really humbling to know like that I can be so much better. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, look at this um, in some sort of sense is I'm trying to gain some sort of something positive out of this. I'm just trying to learn from this and realize that I can do better, you know, not in, in order to be in the relationship that I strive to be in. And it's, I do have a lot of work to do on myself, truthfully. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, Katie Thurston found love and Greg Grippo realizes he can do better. No need to have any conversations. Don't leave a comment. Nothing to say, nothing to see here. All right. Uh, of course, you're going to leave your comment. You're going to let me know what you guys think. Hit the like video. Uh, hit the like button, please, and subscribe to this content if you haven't already. Yesterday was a scary moment on my channel where um, a lot of people messaged me. They said they when they typed in my name on YouTube, it said no videos. So everyone thought my account was deleted. Everything should be back up and running. It wasn't anything on my end. Sometimes these glitches happen. I do want to thank everyone everyone for all of the support, the kind comments, and all of the love out there. I'm going to be doing a private Patreon response to all of this. The more info that comes in, the more I want to just get like a big proper response to everything. So if anyone wants to go over there, I'll be doing that by either the end of the day today or tomorrow. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal. That's the insider access membership only community for as little as $5 a month. You can check that out. Cancel after a month, whatever you need to do if you don't want to stick around. So anyway, let me know what your thoughts are on this. Let me know what your thoughts are on Greg's realizations uh, if you think that he's saying all this because he expects to get the Bachelor edit. Some people have said they thought they could see him on Bachelor in Paradise, which I don't think he was on Bachelor in Paradise. I, I would be wildly surprised if he is, but uh, a lot of people have said he's got this sort of in-memoriam edit, which I honestly think Bachelor producers didn't do him any service by, by editing him that way. I think they kind of glossed over or maybe did not realize the severity of how toxic that conversation actually was. Um, I'm sure Greg realizes that due to all of the people like he said he has triggered through this conversation. Um, we are not on a, we being me, are not on a whose side are we on conversation. That's not what this is. Whenever everyone, everyone responds with hashtag team Greg, hashtag team Katie, I think you're I think you're selling yourself short for how we should be analyzing this. There is no absolute good. There is no absolute evil here. These are people that are humans that have never been on, for the most part, a dating show before and have never been in a situation. Uh, Katie's never been in a situation where she's the lead in control, having to express love um, to, to multiple men and, 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 and pour her heart out there. And Greg's clearly never been in, in this situation. Uh, the uh, all the accusations from ex-girlfriends that have come out in the past, whether they're true or not, clearly he's got things to work on. This season might have been the catalyst to help him get the therapy, to help him get the growth that he needs. And who knows, maybe looking back on it, he'll actually be happy for these moments where he was kind of like um, shown to uh, show his ugly side. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment. Go watch the whole video. It's on YouTube. Nick Files conversation with Greg Grippo. All right, folks, more content to come. We'll see you later. Bye now.